Toronto. I told you guys I love this watch. It's insane. I love the contract with the subdials. It's just a perfect everyday watch. Great for anything. Same quality by Tudor. Don't break the back under 5K. Nice man. I was wondering how often should one service his watch? Service? Well, it really depends on the movement. But uh, I've heard some brands uh, or some companies, they actually recommend their clients to service their watches every every year. I've heard of people that uh, they were clients from Cartier or some other brands and uh, they would uh, take them for service every single year, which is out of this world. And usually like a time and day watch, something simple should be every five years, most chronographs as well. But if it's, uh, let's say a modular chronograph, which has uh, two movements together, which is a little bit more complicated, the more pieces it has, I'd say the service intervals should be a little bit more often. It also depends how often you wear the watch. If it's exposed to a lot of heat or a lot of cold, it will also. What I would honestly say is don't fix it if it's not broken. If the watch is running well, don't get it, don't get it serviced. A Rolex, sometimes you can, you can have it for like 10 years and it'll be good to go. I recommend just waiting until accuracy falls. If it's running slow, it's time for a service. If it's ru usually running fast, it might mean that it's just uh, magnetized. So fast is not usually a big problem. Just so losing some time definitely says the watch needs a service. I was also wondering, why is the Speedmaster such a popular watch? The Speedmaster new watch. The Speedmaster is actually the first chronograph to feature the tachymeter scale outside of the crystal. It was usually printed inside the dial. So you see it here on this Tudor Chrono. The tachymeter scale is outside. On previous speed, uh, on previous chronographs before the Speedmaster, it was actually inside the dial. So Speedmaster was the first one to do that. So very innovative, very cool design. It was never done before. And then after NASA uh, adopted the Speedmaster as the watch for all their astronauts, Apollo missions. So the Speedmaster was actually the first watch in the moon, supposedly. And it was worn by Buzz Aldrin. You know, Neil Armstrong was the first one to step in the moon. The second person in was Buzz Aldrin, and he was wearing a Speedmaster on the wrist. There's rumors he was also wearing a GMT, a Pepsi, a Rolex inside, uh, inside the suit, but uh, no one confirms it. Would you prefer a Royal Oak or a Nautilus? Both of Genta's most popular designs. I'd say, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm killing it here. I'd say the Royal Oak. It's the original Genta design. Uh, you know, like after Gerald Genta redesigned the Royal Oak and it ended up being a success after one year of its introduction to the market. Just uh, about three, four years later, Paddock uh, contacted Gerald Genta and they, they said, okay, we need our first uh, steel watch and we want you to do it just since you did this one. Then he created the Nautilus. It was also successful. I honestly prefer the Royal Oak. It's the original design. It's a lot edgier. I think it's more for younger people. Not unless it's a little bit softer. And so while I'm young, I'll enjoy Royal Oaks. Maybe as I get older, you know, I get some paddocks. I don't know. But uh, I'd say Royal Oak is a winner for me. All right, guys. If you like this video, like the content, please make sure to share it with uh, people that might like it. Comment if you have any suggestions, any questions. Like wherever you're looking at it, okay? If you need any watch, don't hesitate to contact us. I'll see you guys in the next one.